All right, hello and welcome everyone to another builds refresh this time for Mirage who has been changed very significantly with the Dante update uh, to go over very quickly is just like a general overview of what changed with Mirage. The TLDR is that basically what light is present in a level no longer affects any of her abilities. She just gets to do her stuff completely regardless of, you know, standing here in the dark or standing in this particular shaft of light. She has been totally disconnected from the lighting system, which is, of course, a thorn out of DE's side, I'm sure, for whenever they are making new levels, and is also a absolutely phenomenal boost to the consistency of what Mirage does. And I think in the testing for this, she may be one of my favorite Warframes now. So to quickly go over the build, because it has changed, though not hyper significantly, uh, we first need to address uh, the elephant in the room. I have been really enjoying this build. In terms of shards, I'm using a Tau casting speed shard. I'm using a Tau parkour velocity shard, which is entirely to taste and very noteworthy that you do not have to run this in any way, shape, or form. I'm also running a Tau energy max, which is also just to taste. I like to have a little bit more energy um, as like, you know, sometimes you can run into situations where you'll run out if you're really spam casting, which doesn't happen a ton, but can. So I threw this in here. Uh, and then two Tau strength shards. These are absolutely not required at all, and we're going to go over why they're even in the build. So, the build is this. This is our, our kind of new kaleidoscope, I suppose you would call it. Uh, it is a little bit less range, as I'm going to use this in far more places that don't require as much range as the full, full range that you'll need for things like circuit. Um, but this is kind of more versatile and more everywhere appropriate as the range on Prism is still an incredibly healthy uh, 64.2 uh, range, which is, you know, very, very good. Not quite cover the entire map and circuit good, but great for literally everywhere else in the game outside of maybe open worlds. So tons and tons of range on Prism, which is, of course, what we want. Uh, and then, of course, we have Eclipse, which is at its full 90% DR and a very large damage increase for those times whenever you need to use it. I will say, with New Eclipse, most of the time I am in the damage reduction form, as it is incredibly good survivability now that it is consistent for Mirage. Uh, so I'm in that most of the time. We, of course, still have her Hall of Mirrors, which is just better survivability and a nice damage increase. You should pretty much just have this active all of the time, as long as you have the energy to spare. And then our new Helminth, instead of relying on Quiver for consistent survivability, we of course have Eclipse taking care of that now, now that it is consistent. So we can actually go in on Terrify. Now, you'll note here that Terrify is a full 100% armor reduction. The reason that it is a full 100% armor reduction is because I have those two Tau Strength Shards. Without that 30% Strength, it goes down to uh, 75, I believe it is, is the number, which I'm bolstering with Gross Projection. I only need a little bit of the strength out of Malt Augmented to get to a full strip with Terrify, even if you do not run any strength shards. That being said, it is, of course, preferable to instantly have a full 100% strip and be able to replace Corrosive Projection with whatever you want to taste. Brief Respite, uh, Energy Siphon, if you want to go that route, though I probably wouldn't. Uh, things like Dreamer's Bond are even reasonable and your radar, because some people prefer that, prefer that. Growing Power, which is what I'm actually probably going to go for. Um... You know, there's a lot of different, like, auras that are good, and basically what those shards are doing is allowing me to drop Corrosive Projection from the build very safely. That's not to say that Corrosive Projection isn't still very useful, and it's what we're going to run for this video to kind of, you know, show me not getting any advantages out of, like, the reason I put those shards in outside of extra strength, which is nice. Um, but that that is the reason those two strength shards are there, is so that I can swap to whatever aura I want. And, of course, you know, more strength is still nice. It's the reason why I'm going to go with growing power, as it makes the entire build better. Um, but yeah, just going to leave cross projection in, in terms of testing. In terms of other stuff on this build, you can see that we are on a full set of all of the range mods. But we are cutting that with also running narrow-minded for a very large amount of duration, so that all of our builds, or all of our uh, stuff is very comfortable. This gives us an incredibly long duration prism with 27 seconds of uptime. Uh, and of course, Eclipse is almost a minute and Hall of Mirrors is also almost a minute. The duration on Terrify really doesn't matter and will likely never come up. What you care about here is the strength, which is why we are, in addition to getting to that cap of armor reduction, still also running Molt Augmented. Once Molt Augmented is fully online, the enemy cap that is on Terrify shouldn't matter too much, as we only need it for a couple enemies at a time anyway, because Prism scales very well. 
Uh, and then we're also just, you know, bolstering a bunch of that strength, transient fortitude, umbral intensify. Uh, and we also have prime continuity for a little bit of extra duration even beyond that. Uh, but yeah, this is, and then al also for efficiency, we are running streamline. Uh, and we are running energize, though I don't think energize is entirely necessary, but it will make things very, very safe in terms of your energy economy. Uh, and it's something that you'll want more if you do decide to invest energy max shards in her, as you'll have the room to actually afford for the uh, the arcane energize bonus. But yeah, that is what is currently up with Mirage, and the the TLDR for this is that it is uh, way better in all ways. So some things were changed with Eclipse to be the new thing that matters for Prism. So if you are in the dark form of Eclipse, your four will have a considerably reduced energy cost which is really, really helpful and helps you maintain your energy economy while being very defensive, which is good. If you are in the light form of Eclipse, you will double the speed at which Prism scales, which is obviously insane. That being said, with a good amount of strength added from Molt Augmented, generally I don't feel like I need to be in light mode in order to get good stuff out of Prism. And for the enemies that I would need that higher scaling for, Terrify is actually filling that in by removing the armor from those enemies so that I really don't have to worry about it. And then between, of course, Eclipse in Dark Mode and Hall of Mirrors, I am, you know, if I'm moving around at all, generally I'm going to be quite safe. Uh, and that is, of course, combining with us running an Augur mod. Definitely also a consideration is that Augur Reach, I would say, is the flex mod here. And if you want to be really, really safe, uh, you can actually run uh, the um, Catalyzing Shields in this slot. You would, of course, have to Forma for that. Um, but you could run Catalyzing Shields in here if you wanted to Shield Gate with this build, and that would be pretty easy to swap in. And of course, the range is very good on Prism, so you're not going to lose too, too much by adding a lot of survivability. Also, things like Rolling Guard or other good options, uh, or even Adaptation if you wanted to go that way, would be pretty reasonable. So, what does this build look like in terms of damage output? I'm glad you asked. So, these are level 225 Steel Path. This is the Arokan Battle Group that we've been given with the new Simulacrum. Uh, and they don't like this at all. We're going to turn on uh, Dark Mode, rip off their armor, and throw our four. So... Her four scales based on the number, the number of enemies that it is hitting. So this is actually a low power test for what Mirage's four can actually kick out. It is extremely, extremely good. This is the part of the video where I tell you that I have been able to achieve above a Saren level kill rates with this build. As in, I'm doing 10 minutes of Tav and seeing like 1400 to 1500 KP uh, uh, kills in that time which is extremely, extremely high because my bar for good KPM in those in that survival mission is 100 uh, and getting 1400, like 140 is considerably better than what I would consider to usually be my bar and what Saren can usually do uh, with, of course, the dual liquors being nerfed at this point uh, is like usually 1200 to 1300 very regularly and... Um, Mirage seems to be able to beat that out pretty easily, at least in the testing that I've done so far. We are, of course, going to do another run so we can see if we can see those numbers again. Um, but yeah, this build is incredibly, incredibly powerful, and it works pretty much everywhere with very high safety. So, with that all being said, let's get to the Steel Path test and um, just obliterate it. Just obliterate it. All right, jumping into uh, the old tab... But yeah, this has been um, very good. If you get any kind of a semi-decent tile for what Prism does, uh, it is pretty crazy what kind of kill rates you can see with this build. And also, it's just very generally useful. Just having Prism bounce her, this is one of the best rooms I've seen. We actually just spawned in it. Um, this room is insane for this. We're just going to hang out here. Uh, but yeah, there's like, there's a good chunk of rooms where like if you see them, like this one, uh, it's actually just, like, crazy. Well, that door's not open. Last time I did this, that door was, like, real. So we'll, we'll see what we see here. <clears throat> but yeah, this is, uh... This is generally kind of what you're looking at. Oh, hello. The enemy is kind of just... If they see the prism, they're not having a good time. And in this room, it's really easy to keep the prism in a place where they can see it, as it's kind of like, you know, a visual funnel. <clears throat> the enemies kind of just, like, walk through the door, and then they, uh, they don't like what they find. As, as you can see. Actually, I'm just gonna throw this this way a little more. You can see, like, the very fast scaling on this. This is actually, like, such a position. I think I'm actually gonna go into, like, the higher scaling mode. 
which is your your light mode. So it's a little bit more dangerous to be in light mode because I can be like one shot basically pretty easily. Um, but if you're in like a safe map position, there's not a huge like you know there's not a lot stopping you. That slash proc certainly wasn't comfortable though. Yeah, you can see we're a one minute in. We're already at one twelve kills. <clears throat> Honestly, if that door was a spawn door, it probably would be even better already. A huge amounts of damage on these armored enemies, like right off the bat, though. If I need life support, let's walk over and grab a bunch of it. But yeah, like Prism is an insane output damage, like just real, like and because it's now I can just turn on dark mode and like just go about my business and like see what's what. I mean, I can actually probably just do this. <clears throat> yeah, because enemies in there aren't gonna like that. If any enemies come to the door, I can just, like, use my one. You know, use the Torrid. Any Eximus make it through, they're also not going to like it. Oh, or enemies can spawn right behind me. We can, of course, just use Terrify on them, though. And it's not a problem. Yeah, two minutes, 251. It starts to get pretty out of hand. <clears throat> you know, this room is actually also probably great for this anyway. Like Xmas, not a not a huge deal. A few finishers on them or whatnot. Grab some more life support. Enemies coming in back there now. Probably was smarter where I was just to stay in this room and like let the enemies spawn elsewhere, but not really a big deal. The enemies coming mainly from that direction and really not enjoying the prism. If you just do light at the, the beginning of this to let some of that initial scaling go crazy, as you could see it doing that there, then you could switch back to dark pretty fast. Like, if you get that sped up scaling really good at the beginning, then you don't really need it uh, for kind of the back half of your four, as you can see there. Yeah, just really, really good scaling. And, like, just everything about Mirage has been made way more consistent, which is what I always wanted for her. Like, just to have her abilities, like, whenever you use them, they just do what you want them to do. Very much mainly her three. Um, has always been, like, the thing I wanted from Mirage. You can see the, yeah, the, the, the scaling increase from going into light mode. It, it is worth being in it for, like, at least a couple seconds every time you throw your four. Uh, if you have the extra energy to throw at it, honestly. A little bit of uh, this Furious built up. Not that we really need it. Your four does have an enemy target cap, but that's usually not a huge deal. It can be a problem if, like, it's trying to target an enemy that you don't want it to be trying to kill first, like an Xmas or something, but usually that's solved pretty quickly um, by just using your two. Also, whenever enemies just want to stop back there and don't want to approach you, you can get out of their line of sight and they'll run towards where your prism is if you're positioned well. Just to show some damage output on an enemy that is, like, pretty much status immune. You can see just chunking through the Kuba Guardian. Like, just... The, the damage output is just actually good. Like, even when an Acolyte shows up, the damage output that the Prism can do on them... It ranges a little bit, but if you've been in light mode at the beginning and then the Acolyte shows up... That scale damage they are really not going to enjoy. This will be one where he's about to show up, so I'll light mode before... He's here, unless it's violence, and then he's going to turn it off. Okay, get some of that scaling there, and now Angst is here. Let's see if we can get them to see the... Yeah, you can see the chunking happening while they can see Prism. Which is like, you know, it's not the fastest way to kill an Acolyte, but it's certainly not bad. <clears throat> Especially while it's killing everyone else the Prism can see as well. Okay, just, just excellent performance. It's basically, like... Kaleidoscope Mirage, what we had before, is now way more consistent, has real survivability, uh, and can afford to run an armor strip, and doesn't kind of have to be locked down to standing in a flashlight, which was always like such an unfortunate thing. 
Yeah, and just being able to take out the Xmas, just no problem at all. Oh, there's actually a challenge for doing finishers. I think I got some of that with uh with the Naros earlier. Did not even notice. Okay, just let the let Prism get its scaling up a bit. And go back to dark. Just stellar. We're at six minutes, seven forty-two kills. A bit lower than I've had in the past. Um that's the spawn room that we started in was the room I did like fourteen hundred in. Um but both sides were open for spawning, which I think matters quite a bit. So you can really you can really see some just insane insane numbers from this though. And of course, you know, her one certainly doesn't hurt uh, for a large number of different weapons. Like, the output is just crazy. Especially, like, you know, you switch her into light mode, and if you're fairly confident in your survival, you can just walk at the enemies with, you know, full incarnate weapon. Like, you know, I wonder how this room is, actually. Probably pretty decent. <clears throat> Of course, you can combine going into light with Terrify. Uh, it's actually one of the few situations where the enemy's running away from you actually isn't so bad. Um, to let you get some of that scaling time in. Really, really nice to have another home for Terrify that actually feels good. Because the only other one I can think of that I actually want Terrify on is really Gara. There's some other applications for Terrify, but like in terms of it's actually great. This is the second Warframe where I really feel that way about it. 875 and seven and a half which is very nice especially considering like you know all the fact I keep saying it but like just like the consistency and the safety with which you can do this is like really nice and of course like huge range so it works on like a very large variety of maps it does require line of sight um and some like you know particularly cluttered maps are going to be you know they're not gonna like this. You're not gonna you're not gonna want to do this on some like really like you know kind of decoration dense maps, I suppose, because your four is just not gonna be seen very easily. Places where your four can just like you know get kind of pool balled and just cornered, where it's not seeing a lot of dudes, also are gonna be a big downside. So it's definitely like map knowledge dependent sometimes, and just like is this tile set good for this? Um, but on the upside you can throw your four and if a tile's not good for it and you have to be in it for like a mobile defense or whatever uh your mirage and you have 90 percent dr that's really good and you have your one which is a nice damage boost even if you're not using your three for the damage boost and with terrify you have an armor strip so there's not much the enemies can really do about you so having a situationally absolutely fantastic dps ability is eh, something i have a hard time arguing with if i'm honest Yeah, about nine minutes, 996 kills. I think this tile's a bit worse than the one that we were in, but it's not really worth switching at this point. <clears throat> we can get like a floor bounce, get it up into the ceiling there. Get that faster scaling going. Oop. Acquired the danger. Put two here to get all the enemies near me dead. Yeah, it's just, just really solid. Oh, whoop. Well, did my three end and I wasn't paying attention? Should be fine. There we are. I guess not. I guess I just wasn't paying attention. We can't get our three to scale real high. And Torment is here. That damage I put on Torment here. Yeah, just like very nice chunky ticking on that. Oh, it was probably the Napalm that got me. Maybe it wasn't there before. But yeah, just just good stuff. Good stuff overall. That's yeah, ten minutes, a thousand and eighty-four kills, which is a little over a thousand, or a little over a hundred KPM. Not as good as I've seen, but still super solid okay, let's head out of here
yeah, having access to just like good DR, and it's a thing that like I could build a Mirage that has much higher defenses. And it's also, um, if you wanted to on this build, actually Augur Reach can be swapped out for any of her augments, which you could do, um, what is it, Full Eclipse? I think that's what the uh, augment is called. So you can also give this benefit to your entire team, which is really solid support to give your entire team 90% DR. Kind of makes you like Citrine with upside in, in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the new Mirage build. Extremely fun. Uh, and just really, really strong in like a good variety of different missions. But yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow. We're going to talk about the uh, the new Incarnan weapons and uh, if they are good or not. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. And also, of course, thanks as usual to the patrons for supporting the channel, especially the $10 patrons, Alex Parnum, Andrew, Arbiter Daydream, Benuvin, Plotomatic, Brutus Salazar, Candelathra, Dylan Dworski, Ethrain, Avon, James Harsthorn, JC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Luzanth, Malakex Williams, Mikokel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Roxidate, Ruby, Sanyu, Skur, Sharp247, Camarillic Wastelander, the Coupon of Death, Tome Worm, Victor Palmer, Waifu Wars, Waldad, and Sarah Fear. And of course, thank you to all of the $5 patrons as well. Your support is extremely, extremely appreciated. Uh, but yeah, the, we're about to get the Dante update. Uh, should be an excellent time. Expect tons of videos to be coming about about all the changes and new stuff that we're getting in that update. And it should, uh, should be excellent. And then the tier list will, will hopefully shortly follow.